Kind of like circle time in the classroom. Come close, come close, you can sit up here. Come like a ring, you're grown up. Awesome. Perfect. So, I have two stories, and I would like my friends up here to pick which one am I going to read first. Based on the cover, what would you like to hear first? Which one? Which one? Which one? She wants otters. What do you vote? Otters? What do you vote? Otter, so it's a unanimous decision. So the otter in charge is a story that I wrote uh, modeled after mine and my little sister's relationship. I was the older sister who was not very flexible and sometimes didn't play nicely. And one day, my little sister got so brave and she said, you know what, Jessica? I don't like how you play and I think we can play in a little bit of a different way. So this story is dedicated to my little sister for her patience and hopefully you like it. You want to come join over here? Oh, you sit in the chair. That looks comfy too. So this is called The Otter in Charge. So we have the small little sister, her name is Murphy, and the big sister is Odie. Come on, Odie, come on. <laughs> Being Odie's little sister was hard for Murray. It was always Odie's way or no play. Odie's favorite things to say were, ooh, me first, then my turn. She took Murray's toys and games, and Odie always wanted to be in charge. On Murray's birthday, Mommy made a beautiful cake, but Odie blew out the candles before Murray had the chance. I'm helping you, Murray, Odie declared. But those were my candles, Murray thought. But she said nothing and handed Odie a piece of cake. When Murray had friends over to paint shells, Odie invited herself to join them. Murray told her, not today, Odie, but Odie grabbed the pink brush anyway. This was supposed to be my special time with my friends, Murray thought. But she said nothing and moved the purple paint closer to her. When Murray made tiny dens for worms and beetles on the shore, Odie changed the game without even asking. Let's build sand castles! But I was building homes for critters, Murray thought. She said nothing and started filling the bucket. One day, Murray put on a performance for her stuffed animals. She was a shining star and her stuffies were enjoying the show. Odie came bursting into the room, grabbed Murray's microphone and started singing at the top of her lungs. Who likes to sing to the brush? I still do that. <laughs> Not very good, but. Murray's paws grew hot. Her fur stood straight up. Odie, I can't take it anymore, Murray shouted. You don't play nice and you always take over. I do not, Odie shouted. I'm just trying to join in the fun. But with that, Odie left. Mm -hmm. Murray thought about what Odie said about joining the fun. Maybe her big sister didn't see that the way she played wasn't always fun for Murray. Maybe she didn't know how to play nice, but maybe she could learn. And Murray could teach her. So she started out by making three rules for playing in her room. When Odie wanted a toy, she grabbed it without asking. So rule number one is ask first. When Odie grew too excited, she became an Odie tornado and made a mess that had to clean. So breathing deeply could help, her take, could help her calm down. So rule number two, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. One more. Feel a little bit more calm? Odie always decided what to play, but Murray's ideas could be fun too. So rule number three was try something new. On Saturday, Odie came to Murray's room at their usual playtime just before dinner. Without saying a word, Murray stopped Odie, pointed at the door with the poster on the rules. What's this? These are the rules I created that will help playtime be fun for everyone, said Murray. Do you remember what it was? Rule number two was take a deep breath, and rule number three was try something new. Odie read the rules. She asked Murray, you don't like it when I just take the toys without asking? <laughs> Murray shook her head no. 
And then Odie asks, you don't like when I become Odie Tornado? Again, Murray shook her head no. But you like it when I'm the leader of the make-believe play, right? Asked Odie. This time, Murray just shrugged her shoulders. I know. The more Odie talked, the more she realized that she hadn't been much fun to play with. It was always Odie's way or no play. And embarrassed, Odie rushed away. Part of her wanted to pout in her room, but a bigger part of her wanted to play with her sister. So a few minutes later, Odie came back to Murray's room and asked her to read the rules again. She said she was trying her best to be fair. Murray told her it's okay to want to play your games or to be first, but it can also be fun to, sh to try someone else's ideas. Odie asked, do these rules mean I'll never get to play what I want again? No, silly otter. Sometimes you can pick, and sometimes I can pick, and sometimes we can agree on something that makes us both happy. Odie hugged her sister. She said, okay, Murray, let's go play dragons and princesses. But Murray, before she could reply, Odie stopped herself and remembered rule number three, which was try something new. I mean, what would you like to play, Murray? She asked. And Murray told Odie her ideas, and they played until dinner time. Odie remembered to ask before taking a toy. She kept calm and didn't make a mess. And best of all, she discovered that Murray had great ideas. Murray learned to use her words to share her feelings, and Odie learned to play nicely. It was no longer Odie's way or no play. Now it was, we both have a say. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Like it? <laughs> Did you like it, Ben? Yes. Did you like the story? I did. Okay, good. Are you ready for another one? I did. Okay, come <laughs> This is my nephew. <laughs> and he's very excited that Auntie's in town. I'm sorry. I'm going to read it. Ready? Okay, so this one's called. And sit down, please. This one's called Mimi Can't Camouflage. And what do you think it is about? What do you notice? Yes, what do you notice? What do you notice about the octopus? I catch a fish. Okay, Mimi Can't Camouflage. Let's start. Ready or not, here I come, Mimi yelled. And in the flick of a tentacle, Barbara disappeared. <laughs> Mimi searched around the schoolyard. She checked behind the swings and under yeah. the seesaw, but no luck. Can you try to find Barbara? See if you can find Barbara. Oh, you found her! And she matches the color of the slime, right? Whoosh! Barbara appeared. She was hiding on the slide the whole time. Barbara, you are the best at hide and seek, said Mimi. Thanks, Barbara. Now it's your turn to hide, Mimi. Ready or not, here I come, yelled Barbara. Boom! Found you! Oh, man! That was a world record! Two seconds, Barbara shouted. Mimi always tried her best to hide, but her friends always found her right away. In Mimi's kindergarten class, all the other octopi could change themselves to look like things you might find on the ocean floor. Watch this. Oh, she made herself the color of the shell. Check this out. Mimi tried so hard to camouflage her. What if I close my eyes? Hold my breath. Make my body really small. But nothing changed. Mimi was the smallest octopus in her class, and she wondered if that was the reason why she couldn't camouflage. Miss Peters, I hate being so small, Mimi told her teacher. You may be small, but you are so mighty. Miss Peters smiled as she hugged Mimi. 
I'm not, Mimi cried. I'm too little to be mighty. I'm too little to do anything, especially camouflage. Before Miss Peters could answer Mimi, the little octopus swam away. Mimi's eyes were filled with tears. Where are you going, Mimi? Her friend shouted. But Mimi just kept swimming. Mimi couldn't see where she was going, and she swam in circles and loops. And when she finally stopped to take a breath, Mimi didn't recognize where she was. Uh-oh, I'm lost. Hmm. What do you think's gonna happen? Shark. A shark. Let's find out. Something doesn't feel right, Mimi said, and her tummy grumbled, and her tentacles were all wacky, and she saw it. A scary sea snake was swimming her way. Mimi hid behind some shells to stay safe. She was in serious danger. Maybe if I'm quiet, the sea snake won't notice me. Mimi closed her eyes, held her breath, and counted to five, the way Barbara did before she changed during hide and seek. Mimi squeezed her body tight, but still nothing changed. She watched the snake come closer and closer. When the sea snake wasn't looking, Mimi swam over to some brown and white coral. She lifted each tentacle and spread them in different directions to look like the coral around her. And she closed her eyes and didn't move. The sea snake tried searching for Mimi, but couldn't see where she went. She's doing a pretty good job of trying to hide, right? See how her, her tentacles here look like the coral? Just another minute, Mimi. Look at how hard she's focusing. <laughs> the sea snake searched and searched, but couldn't find Mimi. Finally, the sea snake gave up and swam away. Mimi couldn't believe it. The snake never found her. She didn't change her skin color the way her friends did, but she could still hide. Her special skill was being super sneaky. The next day, Mimi told her friends about her adventure. I can't change my color to match a shell like Barbara can, but I can make my body look like coral and stay still and quiet, Mimi explained. Yay! Her friends cheered. Yes! Hooray! So excited for her. Mimi was smaller than her friends, mm -hmm. and she couldn't change her color the way they could, but she knew that that didn't mean she couldn't camouflage. Mm -hmm. She just needed to do it her own Mimi way. You find Mimi on the page? There she is. That's her skill. She likes hiding in the coral, right? Yes. <laughs> so which story which story did you like more? Which one did you like? You like the Mimi one? Which one did you like? You like Mimi too? How about you? Which one you like? Which one did you like? I don't want to. I want to go back. You like the otter one? Okay, good. Well, thank you so much. And we have some uh, art projects that you can participate in after. So we have, for those who like the Mimi book, you can make a little octopus. And for those who like the otter book, you can work on making rules to remember for yourself in your room. If you have siblings, that's a good one. Anyone have any questions? The, the grown ups? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, fun to be here. Really good. Thank you. I actually have a question. Yes. I noticed it was the same illustrator. Yes. Did you choose the illustrator? So, they, uh, so this is part of a five book series called My Spectacular Self, which is a social emotional learning. Um, a set of books, and the publisher themselves was Capstone. They selected the illustrator, and then for continuity, she designed all, all five of them. Yeah. But it was such a, I, I was speaking to the librarians earlier, and it was such a pleasure to, to get the first draft, because typically you provide some notes uh, on different things that you'd like to see in the illustrations, and I didn't give her too many notes because I was curious to see how she would, how the story would come to life for her, well, and it was everything I imagined. Yeah, so it was a really fun process. Any other questions? It's a light.
If we're on the fiction yeah. side or the non fiction side? Yes, that's, that's a good question. So for these particular books, um, it no, was an opportunity mom. for you to submit. They gave you what they wanted the book to be about. So basically, the line was, make a conflict resolution story, or make a story about avoiding bias. And then they selected their favorite proposal. So I put together a summary, what the characters would uh, want to interact with, the, what the story would be about, and they selected it. Yeah. Well. 